Hi there, and thanks for tuning in. Today we're going to be looking at lesson 10.2, probability. Today in your notes, you're going to be looking for 10 things to write down, so let's go ahead and get started. The first two things are kind of like a warm-up. What I want you to do is go ahead and read the two questions and look at spinner A and spinner B and then determine how you want to answer those questions. Let's go ahead and pause the video to see um, what answers you get and then click play to check your work. Okay, so for number one, it says, which one are you more likely to spin up on? And that's going to be spinner A, because there's two opportunities to spin up. For number two, you want to reverse, which spinner should you spin? In this case, reverse is listed exactly once in each of the six sections on spinners, so either one doesn't really matter. So you could do A or B, because there's the same number of reverse on each one. The next thing we're going to write down is this probability scale. Um, what you want to make sure you know is probability is when your number is between the, the numbers 0 and 1, and it just tells you the likelihood of that event occurring. This is the scale of likelihood. So what I want you to do is go ahead and copy the scale, just the scale in your notes. Notice how you have impossible 0 all the way up to certain 1 or 100%. Make sure that you include words and numbers of all the numbers that are written on each of the sections of this scale. Go ahead and take time now to pause the video and write down the entire scale. Once you're done, click play and we'll go on. All right, so we're gonna answer a few questions about how to find the probability. This one says there's an 80% chance of thunderstorms tomorrow. Describe the likelihood of the event. So what you're gonna do now is go ahead and pause the video to see if you can determine the likelihood by using one of the four, the five options, and then click play when you're ready to check your work. Okay, for number four, this one is going to be likely. 80% is really close to 75%, and so that is why we would be choosing likely in this case. Number five and six are exactly the same type of deal. Let's go ahead and take time now to pause the video, try the questions, and once you're done, click play to check your work. So for number five, the probability that you would land a jump on a snowboard is one half. That's going to be equally likely or unlikely. That's 50% right down the middle. And number six says there's a 100% chance that the temperature will be less than 120 degrees Fahrenheit tomorrow. That one is definitely certain. We don't live in a desert here, so um, we are going to give that a certain because it is 100%. Okay. The next part of our notes, we're going to be talking about how to find probability. This section right here on this page is just a review. Basically, to find the probability, you're finding the favorable outcomes out of the all entire possible outcomes. So it's like when you flip a coin and you're trying to get tails, that's going to be one out of two chances that you can get it. One meaning there's one opportunity to flip tails. Two meaning there are two complete sides to the coin. What we're going to try now are some probability questions. Go ahead and read this, this um, question here on number seven. Try it, and once you're done, click play to check your work. All right, it says you roll the number cube. What's the probability of rolling an odd number? Remember on the number cube, you have the numbers one, two, three, four, five, and six, and all the odd numbers are circled, one, three, and five. So that is three numbers out of six, or one half. You could have also written it as 0 0.5 or 50%, but all of these are correct answers. If you wrote it in a fraction, you do need to make sure it's simplified, so 3, 6 would not make the cut. 8 and 9, again, are very similar about the number cube. Let's go ahead and pause this question so you can try both 8 and 9. Once you're done, click play to check your work. Again, on a number cube, we have the numbers 1 through 6. The numbers that are greater than 2 are going to be 3, 4, 5, and 6. So that's four options out of 6, which is approximately simplified, two-thirds. You could, you could write this as a repeating decimal, 0 0.66 repeating, or 66.6 .6 repeating percent. Any one of these would work as your answer. <coughs> Excuse me. Number 9, though says, what's the probability of rolling a 7? There's absolutely no 7 on here. So there are 0 chances out of 6 that you could roll a 7, or you could write 0 or 0%. Okay? 
The last little bit is when we use probability. So this one is a little bit different. Um, and you're going to have to do some math work here, but it's helpful to write a proportion, and I'm going to show you how to do that right now. The probability that you randomly draw a short straw from a group of 40 straws is 3 20ths. So how many are short straws? If you start with your probability, 3 20ths, and set it equivalent to your total number of straws, x out of 40, then you can easily see the relationship between the fractions or cross multiply to solve. Most of you will see cross multiplying here. 20 times x is 20x. 3 times 40 is 120. And when you divide both sides by 20 to solve for x, you get 6. So we would answer 6 for that option. Okay. So in a group of 40, there are 6 um, short straws that you would draw. Notice also 20 is half of 40. So 3 has to be half of 6. You're going to go ahead and try number 10 by yourself. Again, it's helpful if you set up a proportion with your probability and your total outcome. So let's go ahead and pause, the, pause this video right here. Try the question, and once you're done, click play to check your work. Okay, what you should have started to try is the 1 15th, and then um, we know that there's a group of 75, so out of 75, x over 75. I cross multiply to start solving. 1 times 75 is 75. 15 times x is 15x. And then I'm going to divide both sides by 15. 15 will go into 75 five times. So in this one, there are five short straws in this section. Okay? That's going to conclude our video today. Just make sure you have all 10 things written down. Thanks so much for tuning in, and we'll catch you next time.